Well, we all have certain jobs that we are better suited for than others, and there are definitely jobs that people with ADD are best suited for. My guest, Mark Spurlock, is here to help us find out the best jobs for our ADD brains. Don't you want to know that? Welcome to Smart Life, Mark Spurlock. Good to have you with us Thank today. You. Now, it's funny because all my life I thought I wanted to be a psychologist and sit behind a desk and help people. And I think that's because my mom was a nurse who helped people. My dad was a dentist who helped people. My grandfather, one of those old-time country doctors, and I used to go on house calls with him. And most of what he did, frankly, right. was counseling, right? right. right. So I kind of wanted to be that because I thought, I don't know, loyalty to my family, keeping up the tradition, whatever. But every time I would see a career counselor, they would say, your personality is better suited, I would always get broadcasting. Isn't that interesting? Interesting. Yeah. And I never wanted to study broadcasting. I thought of it as a technical degree. Right. My family, we didn't do technical degrees. Right. My, I was afraid my family would be disappointed if I went and got a technical degree. Right. So I go through all this school so I can sit behind a desk and listen to people's problems so right. that I end up sitting here. Right. And I, I could have done it with a lot less school and a lot less money is my point. So for crying out loud, Mark, help us before we all make the same mistake that I made. Well, you know, I think I think what I hear you saying is you um, you found a job that is well suited for you, and um, what I, what I've noticed about ADD people and I myself have ADD, you know, is people tend with ADD tend to excel at their job if they have a high interest in what they do. Now, for instance, you were talking about being able to. Um, type out your dissertation in a weekend, and you have this uh, you had this memory for writing and everything else like that. Um, I have a I have a, a memory for people's lives, for instance. I may mm. not remember their name, but okay. you remember their story. I remember their story for years back. Okay, and it's, it, it enables me to have a good connection with them. Oh because, yes, because that's and it what, makes for good counseling yeah, and coaching. Uh, absolutely, when, yeah. When absolutely. You can remember do you what remember? They said last yeah, week. and I'll say, do you remember what you said last year? Or whatever you know, and they're like, oh yeah. That's wow. Right. So um, what we're talking about is the ability to stay focused with interest level. Yes. Okay. So if you have a high interest in something. Um, it's uh, it's a, it's about processing. It, it, your mind becomes in sync. You get into a, a focus that is almost laser like. Yes. Now the person who doesn't have a high interest in what they're doing and they have ADD is in trouble a so lot of the time. So does that mean, just to clarify, does yeah. that mean that people who don't have ADD or ADHD, they are more able to go, okay, I would like to be in this profession maybe because of the financial success or because of just the easy access in their particular region mm -hmm. to that job or something like that. They have more flexibility in what they can do and the person with ADD or ADHD really needs to pay close attention to what their interest is or they might not be as successful in that career. I, I, it's exactly. Or might not ever get into it. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. <laughs> might study for 12 years and yeah. still not do it like me? Yeah, exactly. Because well, here's the reality. There are dull and boring, monotonous tasks in every job. Mm -hmm. But if you love your job, and you really love your job, and you, um, you're able to get through those tasks, see, in, um, your focus will decline with your interest level. Okay, so if those dull, boring, monotonous tasks are still in the area that you love, it allows you to kind of get past some of the problem areas of ADD. I see. Yeah, see, because if you've been diagnosed with, with ADD, um, and I self-diagnosed in graduate school as well, <laughs> um, yeah, it was, you know, then you're able to, um, when you're in that job or when, you, when you've got that focus, okay, it, you're able to get through those tasks and it's going to be a strength to you instead of, uh, you know, if you're in a job that you hate, and you're doing dull, uh, monotonous tasks, um, it's going to be hell for you. You know, It's just not going to be very good for you to be in that job, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of times you're going to find yourself in trouble. The inability to, That's when the, the inability to stay focused, or the ability to stay focused, decreases, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we want to generate high interest, okay, and then that will help you with your focus level. What's the biology behind the whole ADD thing? What's going on in our brains that's not happening in other people's brains or what's not happening in our mm -hmm. brain that's happening in other people's brains? What is, what is the difference in, in the actual neurological uh, makeup of someone with ADD? It's, it's about processing. This is not an intelligence disorder. Okay? Uh, many people with ADHD um, are brilliant. 
okay, but it's about processing information. So, in other words, uh, my ability to filter out distractions may not be as great, okay, as somebody who doesn't have ADHD, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, auditory distractions are very difficult for, I see a lot of children, <laughs> you know, in school who have a hard time. And yeah. one of the reasonable accommodations, for instance, um, um, when a given test is uh, perhaps maybe putting them in a room with no distractions. Mm -hmm. um, because the tip, you know, the, the, the tapping that's going on oh, or yes. anything else like that, they have the, it, it really messes with their ability to, to stay focused Does that on get worse? So it's worse? about processing. Does that get worse as we go through the developmental lifespan? Because I've noticed, you know, in high school, for example, I could study mm -hmm. with a television or a radio on, even somewhat in college, in graduate school, I really needed specific music on to really help me. Now I've noticed if someone even tries to have a conversation with me, a sidebar. Uh, when my mind is on something else, mm -hmm. I literally can't hear them. Mm -hmm. I mean, my poor husband will try to talk to me about, you know, something that I'm supposed to be doing after work. And if my mind is on work, yeah. I literally, I can't hear him, even if he repeats himself five times. And I know he thinks, what a little narcissist you are. Oh, yeah. And it's not that, it's just that's no, not no. where my brain is, and my brain will not go there. Right. I think you also have to take a look at your stress level, too. As we mm. get older and we're adults, we just got more on our plates. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have to do your job, but you also have a family and a husband and uh, maintain other relationships and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So as we get older, our plates get more and more full. And so one of the things is we really need to uh, prioritize and whether you have AD or, D or not. And so um, the other thing is as we get older, we also, I think, learn how to manage things, you know, the ADD better. Mm -hmm. For instance, you can, hand, you can um, deal with these uh, ADD symptoms perfectly natural in, in a lot of cases. For instance, I you know, uh, exercise three times a week. I take fish oil. Um, I rest. I make sure that I have rest. Now, when those factors are in there, I have a stronger ability to focus. When they're not, then I start getting a little bit That's it, yeah. you know, distracted. Exactly. So as an adult, you have, to, you, you have a better ability to take control of your life a little bit better and sort of manage your life and hopefully you know, help with those distractions. Exactly. Now, for those who uh, just want to know, um, you know, maybe they just were diagnosed, and, yeah. and the words deficit and disorder yeah. are so upsetting to yeah. me. I know, I get uh, that. Is there is there is there anything you know about a, a better name, a renaming of this? I keep thinking that's got to be coming yeah. because as we see more and more successful people who have this, they got to change the name, right? Right, right. Well, you know, I think kind of look at it in a couple different ways. I think um, um, people who don't have ADD have, have a particular type of brain that's really good for what I call the uh, the vineyard master brain. You know, they they get up in the morning and they have their list of tasks to do, and then they'll go about it, and it's, they're really good about setting structure. Uh, the person with ADD has more of what I call the hunter brain. Mm. Okay. Oh it, yes. Yeah, you know, it's, so it, it's like the hunt is on. Yes, you know? I got to do this. And yeah, yeah, exactly. All energy into exactly. that pursuit. Exactly. Yes. And, and because the interest level is there, the focus is there, and it's laser beam, and it's right on, and you can show. But meanwhile, up and everything, everything here just got shoved yeah, over. Exactly. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's amazing. I, yeah. I, I agree. Well, I do think it is an ability of sorts, and I guess that is what I want to be our emphasis. Mark, thank you Absolutely. so much. Now, some experts say that ADD, ADHD diagnosis is complete hogwash. We're going to talk to one of those people right after this. Stay tuned for more Smart Life.